Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to the Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Today is Flashback Friday, a feature in which I republish one of my earlier videos you might not have seen that contains really important coping strategies that will help you attain a better mood. Now, here's today's video. What exactly is worry? Well, Noah, worry is a, a kind of fear. It's a quality of fear, but it's not the kind of fear you would feel if you were walking in the woods and a bear jumped out on your path and you said, oh my God, I better run or I'm gonna get killed. You know, that fear of something in the moment. Worry is about a fear of something that has been imagined, something that has not happened, something that's in the future. Now, as human beings, we are given the blessing and the curse to be able to see into the future and look back into the past. Animals are like our dog in this room, right? He's just living in the eternal present, right? right. What me worry? He's a dog. What? Of course, he can't plan, he can't hope, he can't dream, right? But he can't worry also. So that's where worry comes from. It's an about an imagined fear uh, that has not happened. Okay. And is worry helpful? Worry is never helpful, but especially when a person is depressed or anxious, it's even worse. Because what happens is when you're anxious and you start worrying about something, it simply escalates your anger, your anger, excuse me, your anxiety, which creates more worry, which creates more anxiety. In my case, at a certain point in the game, it led to suicidal thinking, as I'll explain in a moment. So worry is counterproductive. Well, how did you cope with worry then? Well, <clears throat> you know, when I was depressed and you were depressed, we all worried a lot about a lot of things, right? I worried I was never gonna get better. I worried I was always gonna have to live with my parents, right? I worried I was never gonna be independent. And I also worried I was going to die in a mental hospital because I became obsessed with the thought that this was how I was going to end up because my cousin had ended up there, a friend in high school. I was just consumed by this thought and I couldn't get out of my head about it until <clears throat> this counselor and I came up with a three-step um, technique or tool, which I called Back to the Present. Remember, there's a very popular film in the early 80s called Back to the Future? Of course. This is called Back to the Present. And I wrote about it in my book here because it's really about taking your mind and reeling it in, reeling it back in from the future and back to the here and now, because the here and now is the only reality. See, everything else is just a figment of our imagination. So how do we get back? And you know, the NAA, they say one day at a time, and that's why they say that. So the first step into the, uh, this back to the present technique is to notice what's happening, to become aware. Oh my God, I'm worrying, I'm catastrophizing, you know? I'm thinking something's going to horrible, horrible is going to happen, and you just catch yourself doing it. Once you catch yourself doing it, step two is, but you know what? This is in the future, so I'm, but I'm in the present, so I'm safe right now. This can't hurt me because it has yet to happen. This is a figment of my mind and my imagination. So this is really not real. Here I am in the room. I'm breathing. I'm alive. I have food. I have oxygen. I'm okay. So. Here we are in the present. This is, a, this is a made up figment of my imagination. And the third thing to do is to, once you realize that the future cannot hurt you, is to bring yourself back into the, into the present through some sort of positive self-talk or a positive action. For example, this too shall pass. I've gotten out of these depressions before. I can get out again. Or turn your attention out of your mind, right, into an activity like go around the block and take a walk, call a friend, right? Um, turn on some music, distract yourself, you know? Take your focus out from looking inward into the world and do a present day coping strategy. Now, when my mind was going like this and this, I would then pop a clonopin sometimes, which is a, which is a minor tranquilizer, which I save for occasions when my thoughts and my actions couldn't work. And what would the clonopin would do is in 20 minutes, I'd be loopy and kind of silly and dumb, but I wouldn't be worrying. So, and the idea was to, how can I get myself through the end of the day? Because once I went to sleep, I knew that tomorrow was a new day and I could start all over again. So do something in the here and now that brings your focus back into the here and now and get out of the future. And anytime you catch yourself catastrophizing, anytime you start to find yourself worrying, notice what you're doing, tell yourself this is the future, not the present, and do something in the here and now. So that's the technique that I used. So Doug, are there any other techniques that you would recommend to the viewer for coping with worry? Yes, many, many years ago, I saw the self-help author Wayne Dyer at a uh, talk he was giving, and he said something I never forgot. He said that 
all worry falls into two categories, right? Stuff you can do something about and stuff you can't, right? So if you're worried about something, like you can do something about, like, you know, how am I going to pay the bills? Well, maybe you can go out and, you know, uh, budget, you know, learn how to budget your money better or, you know, get some extra work. I mean, there, there are actions you can take when there's something in your control. Right. The stuff that's out of your control, since it's out of your control, you just have to accept it and surrender to it. It's kind of like the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So the serenity prayer is a powerful tool that they use in AA and recovery and that we can use, we depressives and anxious people can also use for us. Is this in my control? If so, let's do something. If it's not in my control, let's surrender. I remember something that Mark Twain said towards the end of his life. He said, I've known a great many worries, but none of them have ever happened to me. Hmm. I've known a great many worries, but none of them, none of them have ever happened to me. When we live our lives in the present tense, in the present moment, then these imagined things have no power over us. So that's where it is. Stay in the present, stay focused, breathe, breathe, and um, know that you are safe. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you found the information on this Flashback Friday video helpful. If so, please give it a like as likes draw more and more people to this channel and hopefully some more subscribers. Uh, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. If you do want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the bell to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or live chat. And if you want to contribute to this uh, channel and become a patron, simply click on the Patreon image. You'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until next video, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much.